Welcome back to another episode of the Block Runner Podcast. I'm your host, William, always here with your co-host, I Man. What's going on, dude? On the six, we got TJ. Hello. All right. So finally, we're back. Um, we interviewed a couple of people in the last couple of weeks. We had Jason on here. Yeah, we were supposed to talk to Evie this week, but yeah, I got sick, therefore delayed the uh, conversation. So that conversation is going to be happening next week. Same time Most next likely. Week. Yeah. Like a 99% chance. Unless for some reason. So is it like a meter strike or what? <laughs> Any of the other Nuclear one percenter, strike? one percenter um, barriers of resistance to this. Yeah, uh, very. Uh, this is inevitably very interesting conversation we're gonna have with Evie because yeah, not only was he just, <coughs> co- I, I don't know, by whatever coincidence, whether it's like universal, yeah, um, destiny or like it's just he just kind of like fell into. Yeah. Into the equation of like thing, like I don't know, like it was literally out of thin air. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't know Evie at all. We didn't know of his existence. We still don't know. Well, we don't know him personally, but we, we know him. <laughs> Everybody knows him now. Yeah. But yeah, he did something so tremendously, I think, uh, important to the DMT ecosystem. And considering this is his first project ever done. And like, there's just so many things about the guy that's impressive. Yeah, 100%. From our perspective, right? It's just, you couldn't have asked for a better like steward or... Evangelist. Um, ambassador, ambassador for DMT, right? He's yeah. out there actually like slinging yeah. the gospel. <laughs> yeah. And he's doing it like, you know, in a very elo- eloquent, like um, sophisticated manner, right? Yeah. Agreed. And it's like, damn, dude, sh- fucking universe delivered. Yeah. Delivered us a unicorn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what's crazy is that he front, front ran like the protocol update. Damn it. That word front ran. I don't know why that this just feels like a. It's like a bad thing. I feel like, well, yeah, you know, everyone's like trying to avoid front running and stuff. It's like, oh, they, these front runners. That front run like brings out like an implication of like exploiting. Yeah. I think yeah. they didn't exploit anything, right? He, no, he, he just got ahead. I mean, right. it's like everyone using um, rug. Everyone uses rug for everything. Any Anytime you, you connect to a Twitter space and then you disconnect, I was like, oh, this guy rugged. <laughs> Oh, I see. Like the word itself, just a, every word, yeah. in crypto gets misused. Good point. Yeah, every like, single word. Yeah, it's like, oh, dude, it's like, uh, I can barely hear you, or stuff. You know, on this, like you're yeah. saying on the Twitter space, like, yeah, like, you're rugging, you're, bro. you're rugging. Yeah, it's like it, you know, there's no actual financial uh, implication there. Yeah, <laughs> even though that is the origin of the. Uh, yeah, the rugging is very term. specifically a a. The action, a malicious of, act, a, a malicious act of removing liquidity where liquidity should be had, something like that. Yeah, <laughs> it's just putting an end to the funds, the fun part of the party, right? It's like the, the tr- music stops, the trading of the party. Yeah, yeah. Whether it's like, oh, I created a back end loop to this smart contract. Oh, yeah, you suckers thought you were like, you know, contributing to uh, DeFi. Nope. Yeah. You're contributing to my my, my wallet. wallet. Yeah. <laughs> That's really what you were doing. See us suckers. Yeah. That's a rug. Right. Correct. So yeah. I, I only bring it up just to say, like, you know, he didn't like front run anything. He I guess he front ran like our final delivery of the spec, right? Yeah. What he did was what we had envisioned in our own mind mm-hmm. of what was possible with DMT. Yeah, we had like the in our own minds, it's like we felt like we're, we, the burden was on us to kind of like showcase yeah. like why this is a uh, an important addition to the ordinal space and yeah, why this is a this is a necessary component to add to the DMT framework. Yeah, right? yeah, it's like I guess we're gonna have to show them, dude. Typically, that's like what we did back in the day, like in our yeah metaverse decentraland days. We created metas, right? Metaverse enabled tokenized apps. Yep, yep. And we were like the first ones to deploy these types of assets in the virtual environment, right? So it's like, I don't think anybody else was kind of like doing these types of things before us. So it was like, you know, we're going to showcase this is what you can do. And then yeah. like a, an actual Cambrian explosion happened. See, but that's the thing. It's like uh, people were doing something similar, but they were just like, it was ad hoc and it was, there was no standard. It was like, it was just, yeah, just the creation for, for creation's sake, mm-hmm. which you can do, but the... The value here is is the standards. <coughs> it's the standard of DMT. It's the fact that, you know, whenever you apply your creativity to the standard, you come up with something like NatCats. All of a sudden, it's like supported, and it's like on chain, and and yeah. it's like you know anybody can support it, right? If they you know agree with the the whole ecosystem, right? Yeah. And so the standard really makes it uh, more valuable. 
hundred percent. Yeah. So EV came in and basically uh, understood what the standard was for, and then he just comp- he applied it in his own interpretation, and it just yeah. it ran away. Um, it far s- exceeded any of our expectation, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, absolutely. Like from a day one perspective, it's like, oh, this is cool. You know, going to the NatCat viewer thing and like just in- inputting a block number, mm-hmm. a block height, mm-hmm. and then seeing these things generate like instantaneously knowing that other traits are derived yeah. from on-chain properties and then their supply is completely dependent on on the pattern's existence. It's like yeah. it, it brought everything so perfectly together. Yeah, yeah 100%. You know, and it was like, Phew. and then now people, they yeah, get then, it. Right? Then, you know, a lot, of, a lot of influencers in the Ethereum space started talking about it. And like it even like, you know, penetrated to like different, um, you know, ecosystems as well. Yeah, I mean, that's tough. Like that's the first time... I guess we've had firsthand experience of mm-hmm. like something we didn't create NatCats, but it, it, it comes from something that we've put out there, right? With the yeah. DNC framework. Yeah. It's the first time like anything that we've kind of like incepted has gotten that kind of a response. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting. Like uh, our experience with at least me personally, is like we, now we get to kind of like, I definitely feel present. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. we're actually ruffling some feathers. Like people are yeah. pissed Yeah. <laughs> and people are happy. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and that's I think from a creator standpoint, that's where you want to be. Yeah, you don't want to be in a place where everybody loves it because it's it's a cult. A cult. A cult. Yeah. Well, even cults get like tremendous hate, right? Only the people. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but really, you just don't want to create something where nobody's like talking about it. Yeah, basically. That's the real. Yeah. Like, or it's like an echo chamber. Is better. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah. Where you could be stuck in like a multi-month loop of like. Yeah, this is cool, right, guys? Like, yeah, it is cool. And it's like, and that's about it. Like, everybody yeah. agrees it's cool, but it doesn't get any, like, outside input or influence or interest. Yeah. And that's what you don't want. Correct. So, yeah, there's been a lot of attack. <laughs> so, I mean, Which is a good signal, right? That's yeah. A, that's a sign of progress. Yeah, we're getting used to it at this point. And, it, again, it's, it's part of, like, the experience, right, of, like, yeah. seeing something actually... Um, get some appreciation and like, you know, not, not just that it's just, it's just grabbing people's attention and awareness. So yeah, that has all kinds of, uh, yeah. For all the hate action. that this, this could get or is getting, I mean, there's like 10 times more like enjoyers out there. Correct. Did you know that we're more than just a YouTube channel? We also built Mscribe, the first inscription platform built from the ground up for the metaverse on Bitcoin. Connect your bitmap ordinals and use our tools to bring your community into the virtual realm. Support us by joining the movement at mscribe.io. Like, comment, and subscribe for the latest alpha. Back to the video. Yeah, so it's interesting to see this. So we, we announced something this week, a mm-hmm. partnership with Redacted. Yep, that's right. Which is uh, one of the more and ent- highly anticipated collections. I mean, Redacted right away, when once um, you know they put out their... their marketing, whatever, that their, their, their presence, their, their intention to create a DMT collection... They were the first ones to kind of like uh, point out clearly that there's an issue with like the current existing, I guess, um, infrastructure provisions, right? Basically yeah. open and free fair mint distributions, which obviously, you know, the ordinal ecosystem loves this stuff, yeah. right? Yeah. Because it's it's like the lowest barrier to entry for, for any party involved to like participate in these mints. Yeah. But quickly that became a little like oversaturated, some specific players has had like too much of a hand in this uh, minting process and mm-hmm. it quickly kind of like i think diminished yeah the ecosystems. i mean there's uh, a few people who are just like launching tokens left and right and like minting like 10 to 20 percent of the supply and then pumping it on twitter and yeah and people yeah. got like they understood the pattern here and they're like yeah. hey this is actual trash yeah. and uh it kind of like spoiled things i think and, so and so it's important to to give creators the tools to allow them to distribute however they want, right? It could be through a price. It could be through just limiting the uh, the mints per wallet. Yeah. And all these like uh, other methods, right? Pretty much. White lists and such. Yeah. So, so that that's pretty much part of what we're like working on is making sure we can, um, you know, satisfy different type creator type needs, right? Because, you know, we're not new to like, um, that initiative trying to like you know understand what it is creators need again that's that's been our focus since the beginning yeah if you really go back to like the early days of this podcast you'll you'll hear us talking about something called metazone mm-hmm. and metas and like you know just 3d content that's deployable in the metaverse space back in those days yeah which was purely an ethereum uh Play. ecosystem yeah there was no ordinals 
no bitmap, none of that, right? But our focus has always been it's like, damn, there's this whole there's this opportunity for for content in the metaverse. But every time you logged in and you you were present within it, it's like that seemed to be the biggest thing that was absent. Yeah. It's like yeah, something it, is wrong here. Right? Yeah, and we're we're sort of like technology maximalists. We want to create technology <laughs> for developers and creators to like make stuff and uh, make stuff in a way where it's like repeatable. Right, that's that's how you how you sustain yourself, really. Yeah, and it's also it's like so. What's going to be the thing that captures people's mm. um, attention and keeps them engaged and yeah. retained within the metaverse space? Right. Well, it's got to be the content. Yeah. You know, draw the parallels between the internet. The internet's pretty freaking lame if there's no like actual good yeah. content, right? Yeah. Imagine if uh if the internet was like. Uh, only for developers, right? You couldn't create your own website these days. And, and that's how it was in the early days. <coughs> yeah. And that's why there was like this internet boom, right? Yeah. At that time. Pretty much. But you needed a developer to make a website. And then all of a sudden developers got smart and they're like, hey, why don't we just make tools for anyone to make websites? Mm -hmm. And then you have like things like WordPress and Webflow and all this like cool stuff. Yeah, and a lot of platforms like YouTube, TikTok, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Basically user generated content distributors. That's right. That is like the large part of, part of like our attention is focused on these types of platforms now. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Things that anybody has access to, then you could produce your own content, contribute your own value. And as a result, extract your own, like you can monetize these things, right? Yeah. YouTube is thriving. Twitch thrives. These streaming platforms, yep. you know, TikTok, it's all like a big open source uh, endeavor, like a game competition to outproduce one another as far as like yeah. content, right? Yeah. So we figured the metaverse is probably going to need to be something very similar. So the thing that's missing are, are actual tools. Yeah, correct. To introduce or expand the scope of participants, right? Because yeah, if, if YouTube's limited to like five, ten creators, yeah, content's going to blow, dude. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. At one point, it kind of was that, like in the early days, just you know. Yeah, it was just like people in front of the camera, just like singing or, <laughs> right, and. Oh, fucking people playing Call of Duty, syncing. doing like yeah. 360 no scopes. That yeah. was what got me into YouTube. Yeah, it was like it was like I was playing Call of Duty nonstop. I was like, I really wanted to learn how to do a 360 no scope. <laughs> so I was like, let me go on the internet and see if I could find some kind of a how to video, like a forum. Because <laughs> back then, how forums. to pwn, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> how to no scope fools and stuff like that. And then I found this thing called YouTube. I was like, oh, this is interesting. Uh, it's a video platform. Mm -hmm. You know, I've heard of these before. Like. But the Justin thought never TV entered your like mind. like, I, I should make videos. Oh, fuck yeah. Many times. Oh, it did? Yeah, but you had to get like a capture device or something like that. Oh, uh, the resistance like stopped you? It always does. <laughs> Especially oh, back then sucks. when you don't have a fucking Money? bank account. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like in uh, freshman year of college or something. It's like, yeah, yeah I, had a new, I forget what they're called. They're like, it's like a box. Yeah, you yeah. Know? You connect the HDMI to your Xbox. Xbox. Yeah. And it's like, it's capturing your your... Your ponage. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, of course I wanted to do that because after consuming YouTube, you're learning how to 360 no scope. I was really good. Dude, TJ Vouch. I agree. It's true. <laughs> I agree. I remember Just he was. Thanks, dude. <laughs> Elite level cop player. <laughs> I, I remember you'd come over and then you'd play on on the PlayStation. You just like dominate these fools. I was a legitimate no lifer. In other words, <laughs> <laughs> for about a whole year, I, I remember people were like, you, "You do the drop shotgun." Yes, yeah, the drop yeah. shots. Like, yeah. it was insane. I'd go in there, go like sixty and one, yeah. like nuke deployed, like almost every round. Yeah. I was like, dude, this fucking loser. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was like the shit though. I was walking around like, dude, I'm the best. Yeah. I remember when I got 10th prestige, like everyone was mind blown. Like, how the fuck? Yeah. It's like, you must have like hacked your way up there. It's like, nope. Those are real man hours, dude. <laughs> Expended to get that prestige. Right. So yeah, I can thank that to YouTube, really. Huh. <laughs> that was my introduction. And then since then, I was hooked. So you actually like did research on how to like, of course, like own strategies and stuff? When is like getting good at anything not required like that's that level point. of like work? Yeah, that's a good point. I, I, yeah, in order to get that good at that game, I spent a lot of like half of it was like learning, <laughs> learning. Yeah, and then the other half yeah, is like practicing execution. Yeah. yeah, like I, dude, I was a real gamer, dude. That's cool. <laughs> that's good. Thanks. <laughs> I'm glad I got some uh, validation for like multiple decades spent doing that. Basically. Yeah. 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 It's fucking insane. You're finally yeah. getting your flowers, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> finally. Uh, yeah, so that was all for something. But yeah, that, that led me down a path of basically like absolute 
<laughs> gamer degeneracy. You know? Yeah. But yeah, that's that's how. Well, that's that's, how it is. that's where our wisdom comes from. Really, is like all the gaming years. Yeah, and that's how I, I think you know that that contributes to why we're able to do what we do in this crypto space now. Yeah. The idea of like you know wanting to be good at something, wanting to be good at like identifying trends, yeah, uh, finding frontiers of like where the innovation gaps are and such like that. It yeah. requires a lot of work and like learning to get to that. Right? Yeah, it reminds me of uh, Vitalik just recently <coughs> spoke about the metaverse. Like someone asked him, like, "What are your thoughts on the metaverse?" And he gives he goes on for like maybe a minute and a half talking about it. And the biggest takeaway that he said was that the metaverse needs a better definition. Yeah. That's well, like he only ult- spoke for like a minute, but yeah, that, yeah, was, that but, was basically it. But ultimately, I think that's I think that is everybody's takeaway is like the metaverse is so ambiguous that it's really hard to to show somebody here's the metaverse is like yeah. really this is it. It's like well, really, it's not. It's not just Roblox, right? Right. It, it's not just Fortnite. These are not the metaverse. These are experiences. Yeah. I don't know if they qualify as the metaverse, and then we have yeah. our own definition of what the metaverse is. He's definitely right. In that sense, there's definitely a stratification of like idea. Yeah. And like during the last hype cycle of the metaverse, like there, a lot of, um, you know, the word itself was just completely yeah. like hijacked. It and was like, hijacked. Yeah. It was like horrified, if that's a word. It was just yeah. like hoard out, hoard to, out yeah. to every like industry you could think of, you know, it's like, yeah, you, you're to creating the point a where little Walmart's the metaverse, you know, it's like, <laughs> yeah, you're creating a little web game and all yeah. of a sudden, oh, this is the metaverse too. Yeah. Yeah, so it got confusing real quick. Yeah. And um, so he's right. So that's why we're so interested in bitmap. And that's, you know, it's like that doesn't really contribute in any way or form into like creating that cohesive alignment towards a singular definition. But I don't necessarily know that if there needs to be a singular. I don't know, man. The definition. internet was very like open. It, it, well, was, it was very narrow in like its capabilities. It was just like a communication protocol. Okay. And like the metaverse is like almost anything. Well, and that's a problem. Well, try your best right now. Like it's spin up drum up like Well, I I feel like the metaverse okay, is Okay, the internet's a communication layer. So you want a one liner? Yeah. It's like a digital economic. God damn it. See, I, the, not good enough. It's not good enough? I don't a digital I mean, economy? Like that's that's what it is, I think. Well, I mean, communication, digital communication. So you want like protocol like type. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm just trying like to a, like a digital existence layer. I would like fall in line a little bit more with that. Yeah. And like, of course, existence, like one of the components of that is economic longevity and sustainability and stuff like, you know, that's these are the things that we're encountered with in our our default existence layer, which is this thing called the universe. Yeah. Right, you know, without in the absence of like an actual economic system, and you know, there's, mm. it's truly chaotic and disorganized and uh, not fruitful for many people. Right? Yeah. So I of f- course, like digital economics is a big component to like what makes our f- digital existence like a fruitful uh, endeavor. Yeah, uh, well, I feel like there's whatever. there's like a lot of psychological implications for like a digital existence. Like you, <laughs> yeah, there is. you identify as your digital avatar. Right, you you are that person, right, in the digital realm, and to an ex- to yeah, to a large extent, yeah, but yeah, 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 and like it it uh, it's it's sort of like you you have like this physical existence where you don't really choose like kind of what you look like, you don't really choose like where you where you like live, right? You don't really choose a lot of these things. You just you know you're no. just that person, but in the digital realm, you get to choose these things. You identify more, your your identity is more aligned with your choices. Yeah. Than what it's what your natural like physical existence or you're subjected is. to yeah pretty much and I feel like that has a like a psychological <laughs> implication when it comes to the metaverse where I think a lot of people are going to be spending a lot of time you know with this the side of their identity yeah it just sounds so much more like ambiguous like digital existence than digital or like a communication protocol like yeah, yeah that seems it like, is it is very ambiguous in a communication yeah. protocol. Yeah, communication or like an information highway, all these things are just very it's practical. Very clear. Yeah. What it is. It's almost intuitive. Like that that sounds very useful. Yeah. It's not obvious like that there's major pitfalls to like our current day um existence, I guess, parameters or like yeah. what it is we're subjected to in this um base layer reality. Yeah. 
and it's even less obvious that we can like architect and construct something of like option optionability where you can yeah that's right like you're saying be present somewhere else yeah um it, it reminds me again to like um you know <coughs> we discovered this new ai platform that makes music and we oh, were yeah. listening to some of the music and it was all of it was competent like can we listen to that that's not copyrighted in any way right i don't know can't be it's ai it's all free and open right <laughs> well i was looking at some of the terms of service it's oh, like shit Okay. You can't make money off of it unless you're paying for like the subscription. Well, we don't make money here at all. I mean, we don't make money, <laughs> but like if we were to like produce this into like a, I don't know, like a BRC 420, first we'd have to like listen to the song. Yeah. Well, like if we were to like actually monetize this in some ways, like you know, let's create like a 30 second you know BRC 420. It's a it's an audio file. Yeah. And then we sold like a well, I feel like you could. These. You could really like, because uh, this is like AI generated, so you could like design its um, its lyrics, its output, right? Its output, yeah. You, you could design its lyrics yeah. and the output, the the song, and then you could just apply that to like a trailer to whatever art you're releasing, right? And I feel like that's a pretty solid use case. Yeah, I mean, yeah. When you showed me this, I was you know at first very embarrassed, just uh, you just because of the nature of like I just hate to hear my name mentioned in like anything <laughs> i don't know as as counterintuitive as that might seem it's like we're actually not intention seekers <laughs> or like yeah and in any way like you know we're actually dreading the fact that we have to start going to conferences pretty soon <laughs> yeah <laughs> because everyone's just like you guys need to come and it's like fuck dude yeah 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 i'm so much more comfortable here in our little fucking bubble you know yeah i, I totally agree but at the same time, it's like, I understand this is part of like human growth, right? I got to like, we have to experience the discomfort to actually like evolve and, and grow into something, something better. Right. Yeah. Isn't, isn't that what they all say out there? Like, you know, yeah, those Navy SEAL influencers and shit. Yeah. <laughs> hold, yeah. Hold the log up uh, above your head. <laughs> stay, stay uncomfortable. <laughs> For like 12 hours. Yeah. It's like, all you comfortable pussies out there he's like you're going nowhere in life yeah. he's like god damn it dude Goggins i mean is right dude. i mean he, he is right i mean how are you gonna grow if you don't like challenge yourself right and challenging yeah. is like a usually uncomfortable thing exactly so i'm gonna have to like get over my whatever it is i don't want attention and such yeah i gotta grow <laughs> In other words, did you know that we're more than just a YouTube channel? We also built MetaZone, the first app store for the metaverse. Buy, sell, and explore a new class of digital assets like our flagship game Rovi.ai. Support us by collecting your digital assets through MetaZone at MetaZone.io. Like, comment, and subscribe to stay updated. All right, back to the video. Yeah, so, all right. So, let's, this is like so, yeah, let's, day one. Yeah, let's just... <laughs> Let's just humiliate ourselves real quick. I don't know. This is probably other yeah. people might think this is actually cool, but I don't know. We'll see. Let's let's okay. play. Yo, it's the nineties on the west coast. We be making noise talking about bitcoin. It's the actually sounds way better in these headphones. It does, right? <laughs> yeah. That's the game we play. Will and nine man dropping out for making moves every day. Hold on. Rewind that, dude. I, I I fucking missed it. Did you hear it? Yeah, I heard it. There it is. There it is, dude. Will and I, man. Dropping alpha. Making moves every day. From the streets of Cali. We're not from there. <laughs> It's actually way better than I know. I thought it was. I, yeah. I don't. I don't know why you you didn't like it. I mean, this is a very well done, like competent, put together. It sounds like a real rapper. Yeah, I know. Like it's legit. It was as soon as I heard I Man, I was like, fade. <laughs> <laughs> no thanks, dude. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to know about it. Like, I, I just, I don't know. Huh. But I don't know, dude. I mean, I, when I first heard it, I was like, damn, somebody is actually rapping about, like. I knew right away this was AI. I knew, how I how did you know, know, like, right away? Right away. For one, it's like, no human on earth would, like, regurgitate these these words. I, these, yeah, <laughs> I totally disagree. <laughs> We've heard music trying to, like, fit ordinals and, like, fit true. all kinds of, like, weird stuff that they a rapper wouldn't you know talk yeah. about well also like the sound of it, it it sounded literally like every west coast rapper of the 90s like meshed into like a singular oh, okay. entity i could just hear it 
Yeah. You know, I heard everyone's voice at once. It's like, oh, dude, this has to be AI. Oh, I see. You I know? see. Yeah. And like, yeah. No, well, I thought that was just like, you know, a, you know, like how they just edit the song, right? The, the, the rapper's voice. Like this wasn't obvious Well, it's like a me. genre. It's probably like part of the prompt engineering. It's like, yeah, it says it right there. 90s upbeat West Coast I, I know, but what I did was I listened to it without looking at anything. Okay. And it, it was not obvious that this was just like straight AI. Yeah. I don't know. I guess maybe because you linked it to me, it's like, this has to be AI. If this came from like <laughs> TJ or something, <laughs> TJ is not like linking me like AI stuff all the time like you are. You know, so it's like, oh, here's another AI thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That probably like f- fucked it up a bit too or like killed the, uh, yeah, whatever. All right. So you want to see the extent of this. Um, I found another song that I thought was interesting that I think, <coughs> I think deserves a listen. I would say. I did not know it was AI when you first played it for me. Really? Just so you know. Yes, yeah. see? Interesting. It's not obvious, dude. That's it's that's not. what's so crazy about this. Well, this, okay, this here, uh, if you would have showed me this, uh, first of all, I'd be like, why is Will sending me songs about pie? <laughs> 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 I'd be a little skeptical. <laughs> like, God damn, dude, it's kind of weird. But I wouldn't, yeah, after hearing it, it sounds like something that would be like on every, you know, EDM set list. Really? Once once you hear it. Yeah. All right, let's 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 see. <coughs> oh yeah, dude. This is Calvin Harris all day. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know who the hell that is, but I'm just saying. So here we go. These are the first 25 3.14156. Dude. Dude. This is only AI. Once we have our DMT conference, the song is like Dude, that's our it's, back, it's gonna be looping. A background song. song. <laughs> it's like welcome Will and I man. Yeah. And it's like a pie song. See, this is cool, dude. Come on, TJ's jamming. <laughs> yeah, this is actually all right. Let me shut up so you can actually hear the lyrics. So I mean, there really are no lyrics. They're just reciting pi. Just telling yeah. you the first 25 <laughs> digits of pi. It's, yeah. a, it's actually the first 50 digits. 50? But oh, okay. Yeah, 25 at a time. Okay. Yeah. But you, you get it. So it's like somebody like literally said, it's like, give me like an upbeat, like dance song. So I, that... I think there's a couple of some, like couple of things that are happening. <coughs> first, they have like a, a large language model come up with a song about the first 50 digits of pi. Okay. Give me the lyrics, you know, break it down into its course. And uh, it's like, here it is. And then they use this other app, Suno, and they say, hey, give me a lo-fi house. Oh, there it is. Using the these lyrics. Yeah. And then then it generates the voice and, like, the background song and or the beats and everything. And, and then, dude, this is, like, I was really impressed with this. Like, really impressed. Yeah, me too. Uh, this is pretty good. Again, I would have no problem, like, adding this to my yeah. playlist. Yeah, <laughs> even though it's like the most pointless of songs, most songs really no, are these it's days. Useful, dude. It's three point. That's true. Maybe yeah, you know, pi. someone one day will hold a gun to my head. It's like if you can't recite the first fifty digits of pi, you and your whole family are dead. And you start <laughs> and then he sings the song. <laughs> sing the song. <laughs> and be like, you know what? And it's like, it's yeah, like you you get to live. You pass, dude. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's like the alphabet, dude. You can't say the alphabet without singing the song. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, how do you see A B C D E F G H I? Oh, okay. well, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I wanted to right there naturally, like <laughs> going go to like add a in, melody. Oh, yeah, add an inflection to it. Yeah, um, I mean that's <coughs> yeah. So, uh, this is like a I, who was it that showed us this? I think it was somebody in our Discord. Right. Yeah, it was somebody in the Discord. Um. <laughs> yeah. Costa Pete. Shout out Costa Pete. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, no, you don't have any, you know, uh, human musical talent. <laughs> you have AI musical talent all day. But uh, then I was thinking, it's like, <laughs> do you really need musical talent when you have something like this? I guess like not. This? I guess not. That was my response to you, right? After hearing these songs, like, humans are cooked. Yeah. It's fucking over, dude. Yeah. Like, yeah, this is good. So so why are we enough. talking about this? Because we were talking about the metaverse, and then we we're talking about, like, why would anybody spend any time in the metaverse? Like, what what is the point? Yeah. It's like, well, the point is, all our jobs are going to be automated away. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, we're going to be spending time doing something, and we feel like that something's going to be the metaverse. And so that's why the digital existence layer is like saying the communication layer of, or the communication <coughs> protocol of the internet. mm 
Yeah, that might be the driver of like making it obvious as to why we need options as far as yeah, where do we engage our our lively presence within? Yeah. Right? Is it like this physical one? It's like, well, shit, not really, because like it, this physical world doesn't really need me anymore. Mm-hmm. I can't really contribute much as far as like um, human, uh, yeah, human uh, like labor labor or like even like creativity is like this shit's yeah. being outsourced to an algorithm yeah i mean th- these are competent songs i mean uh, these like i can see like you're saying at an edm like they're playing this in the in the background like yeah and it's fine and this is just like early days yeah it's only gonna get better from here so yeah again humans are cooked so then yeah i mean it's it's a worthy like option too let me find some purpose and some um some contrib- some level of contribution through participating in some sort of digital web3 native metaverse society societal layer yeah right <laughs> now i use a ton of different like buzzwords yeah. it's like one it's like synergy and <laughs> <laughs> yeah one like vision of reality but and, and that's why it when people hear that they just instantly get turned off it's like dude this guy's just you're saying out words, yeah. This guy's just a weirdo. He just yeah. uh, obviously he just doesn't have enough friends or something like that. Yeah. Right. It's like those are the people who wanted to make the metaverse happen. Like they're just like yeah, the loners. Like lonely. Yeah. Loners. They don't get poos or yeah. whatever. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, like yeah. their motivation <laughs> is. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously, I did like Zuckerberg's whole motivation is just digital poos, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. got to be right, but I don't know. Some people, that's true. Some people want yeah. some digital poos. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I mean, why not? Yeah, why not? Is that actually going to hurt anybody? God, I hope not. <laughs> I yeah. really hope so. Hopefully not. <laughs> hope somehow that doesn't manifest into like something actually truly bad. Actually, it probably could, considering. Yeah, but. The psychology. There's already that. all kinds of bad stuff happening as it is. <laughs> Let's right. just fuck it all up, dude, at this point. Yeah, we need a reboot. <laughs> We need to reboot the whole system, the DJ whole was thing. Right, dude. We're back to our doom days. Doom, doom and gloom is back on, boys. <laughs> yeah. Doom and gloom era. It's like it does not matter that Bitcoin's at seventy two grand. It almost feels like it doesn't, dude. Like it, it, I, I don't know. I mean, obviously, it mm. does. It, it almost imagine. feels like it doesn't. You're right. Yeah, well, d- maybe that's like a that's part a, of. That's a very weird thing to say, though. A seventy two thousand dollar Bitcoin, like. Yeah, it's like it's it's like fucking flirted with seventy two k like three or four times now in the last like three or four weeks, and it's like so yeah. so what, dude? It, but we st- we started the podcast. By the way, we're at twenty thousand subscribers on YouTube. <laughs> that, yeah, yeah that's did it. Very good. It's good timing, you Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we did it. We so, should accomplished. We should, yeah, <laughs> we can retire. We're out now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we forgot to install the banner. Yeah, but yeah, that's cool, dude. Twenty k. Twenty k, and uh, there's a reason why I was bringing this up. <laughs> oh, because when we started the podcast, Bitcoin was at thirty five hundred dollars, and and yeah. to think, imagine if if at that time we we were like, you know, <laughs> the future selves come back. It's like you know, Bitcoin will be hanging out at seventy two thousand dollars, and then we'll just be like, it doesn't even matter. It, yeah. <laughs> And it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, imagine that. That's, yeah, that's that's a crazy kind of like thought. It's true. I don't know what that is. If that's just us, like we've we've been, we've you know, seen, like, we've we've felt it all. We're like numb to it. I, maybe I, I think it's the normalization of like just the price. Like <laughs> eventually, B- Bitcoin's going to get to like two hundred k. Then it's going to crash to like fifty k, and then you know it's going to reach like five hundred grand. And 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 all these like points, it's going to feel like it doesn't matter. Yeah. It's kinda, like Bitcoin today is like five hundred thousand dollars. Like so what? It's like, but you know what, this ordinals thing happening, you know, it's like it's a normal thing. Yeah. But it's just weird, like when you really think about it. Yeah, I agree. It, it there's a lot of things happening right now that is just weird if you think about it. That's true. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. I don't know if this is like just we're we're entering like a like a wall of some sort. I don't know. It's like some weird limbo say like a year ago, like we were so fucking amped about everything it's just like yeah. you know but uh, and then rewind a year prior to that like everything it was, it was, was just so fucking collapse of everything everything was so terrible it was like God. yeah we're talking about like how many chickens that we each had to make sure <laughs> we could survive <laughs> exactly we felt like the writing was on the wall like for sure economic collapse is imminent it's like we've never been this close to like actually pushing the nuclear button right 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 yeah like literally russia and ukraine break out yeah it's just everything just seems so 
bad and ominous and it's like fuck and then sam bankman freed ftx happens yeah, banks collapse dude literally banks it actually felt like the the sky was falling yeah again so i don't know we're just humans and but really nothing that bad is happening yeah sam bankman freed is now 25 years in jail convicted i guess diddy's on the run that's kind of diddy's scary. on the run <laughs> Uh, Jared Fogel of Subway Pedophile gets out in five years. That's kind of sc- alarming. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a little list of things that doesn't make sense and are kind of weird. It's like, how's that guy getting out? Yeah. Fucking Selena's murderer just got out. How's that make sense? You know, yeah, yeah. there's a weird shit happening in this physical re- reality, dude. Maybe yeah. that adds to the, the, the thesis. So like we need option two. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. We do need like the digital existence. Correct. Yeah. It's a lot. I, I don't know. As far as like escapism, it's like a natural thing humans tend to like do whenever things get tough or rough and you know, you mm-hmm. enter low points in your life. It's like, man, I, I, I need to do something to yeah. get my mind off of like being confronted regularly with this, the, the burden of this existence. Dude, I feel like social media has really contributed to all this like sentiment, yeah. like this negative sentiment, like about Perpetual? existence and life and all that. Yeah. And yeah, the, and I feel like when you do like an objective assessment of like the quality of life, uh, just on average, it's like we're significantly safer, yeah. significantly better. Yeah. Everything is like significant. I know, like good. So then, what's what's the problem? It's social media, like I said. It's like Th- that's it. That's the only. I think I think culprit? it is. Yeah. Okay. Because think about it, we can't trust like CNBC, Fox, CNN. We can't trust what they're saying because it's biased. Then you go to social media yeah. where it's unbiased, roughly. And then you find out it is actually biased. And then all the stuff that the algorithm feeds you is just like sensationalism, violence, you know? Yeah, it is. It is pretty. So it's like, d- dude, we're fucking, this is, we're doomed. Like no matter what we do, we can't have like an objective view on things except for science. That's why I like science. It just seems like there's a lot of disgust out there for me. Like seeing all these like. Well, because I think the algorithm just feeds you that stuff. Well, I know, but actually, but things are actually coming to light. But, but people always know knew it's like, you know. There's well, we didn't know that Jared Fogle was going to be like a pedophile, and he was being pumped <laughs> by his subway. Right, but it just feels like this is becoming so much more ubiquitous. You know, it's like major politicians. You know, islands are just fucking out, out, like left and right are being yeah. discovered. It's like sex trafficking's all time high. You know, all these things. Yeah, and it's like this, every celebrity somehow is tied to this. It's people we've like typically revel. Revel? Oh, yeah. Whatever. Revere. Wor- <laughs> Revere. Yeah. <laughs> Worship and idolize. Like these are the people we grew up with. Like, you're like, dude, fucking look at this guy. dancing and <laughs> yeah. shit, dude. He's fucking cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to be like him. I want to buy his merch. Yeah. You know, I want to sip on his tequila. Yeah, all his- of a sudden he's like in his like compound. Yeah, little did you know. Running he- <laughs> a, uh, some, some sort of like illegal... <laughs> Activity of some kind. <coughs> Several illegal illegal activities, allegedly. Yeah, I mean, I haven't followed up as to what exactly P. Diddy has been doing, but I mean, he just yeah. got raided by the SWAT. And, <laughs> like, like, double raided. And they had, like, <laughs> uh, they had tanks there. I know. Like, they're about to go to war. Right, exactly. So, it's just, like, what else is going on? And, like, it's just, there's a layer of disgust. Yeah, in our culture and in society, at least from what I perceive, and it's like it, it definitely gets to me. And you're right; like if I wasn't confronted with this, if I could just be in my own isolated like view, metaverse, whatever, my own view, like whatever's in front of me, yeah, the way it used to be, I think I would definitely be like a little more inclined to not feel. Yeah, so I like, feel I feel like there's a yucky. there's a trend to thinking like the past was much simpler, but I think the past was just. It didn't have like the social media influence that we had today. Mm. No, not and, at all. And like it just, it felt simpler, but it wasn't really. It was equally. Well, there's as definitely a lot more like data to take in now. Like back then, you weren't yeah. worried about everything going on in the world, dude. You had like, what's going on in my farm? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. In your community, how am I going to eat? The people that actually meant something to you, like, yeah, yeah. Why do I? Why do I give a fuck about what's happening to Diddy? Yeah. I, sh- I I truly I don't in- internally, but still. But it's it's interesting. I'm captivated we, nonetheless. Yeah, we used to enjoy his songs back in the day. Yeah. Right, and all of a sudden he's like uh, a kingpin. <laughs> Pretty much, and then yeah. it gets me thinking: who else is like this? You know, fucking who else do I like? Uh, let me think. Yeah, like The Rock. 
right? If the Rock had oh god had like some the sort of illegal rock. action, exactly. Yeah, it's I like would he's, be shocked. He seems like too squeaky clean. Like he probably is for sure, like building a uranium bomb or something. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> As we're speaking, you know, yeah, shit like that. You know, I don't know, fucking Drake. He's like a billionaire rapper, mogul, musician. He's probably done some horrible, mm -hmm. absolutely disgusting things in his past. I'm, I'm almost certain. Yeah, but that wouldn't be as surprising as The Rock doing that. <laughs> no, I know. I'm just yeah. saying. It's just all these people, man. Everyone's just like. The fuck, man? Yeah, Mr. Rogers. Like, what if... <laughs> no. What if, yeah, what if he, like, gets exposed somehow, like, I in know. the past? Right. So it's just, damn, dude. It's it's damning. It's 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 definitely, like, soul-sucking. You know, just, just coming... Yeah. These things coming to light and, like... It, it, it definitely does affect uh, our emotional state, for sure. I think so. A little and bit. And it's unfortunate. Yeah. But, I mean, that's what makes us human, I guess. Yeah, and then to add to this, while all this is happening, and then, like, the crypto space is just... It devolves yeah. into so much like fucking hatred and venom and toxicity amongst one another. Just again, we talked about this at length in the past. It's over something like fucking digits like, on a screen. Just like, like art. It's like all of a yeah. sudden Pixels. there's like actual hate and there's like <laughs> death threats and yeah. all kinds of Real stuff, threats over, and stuff over art and pictures. Yeah. It's yeah. weird. It is weird. And it's just, it, it just adds on. So yeah, I, I've been noticing people in the comment section of our videos like, dude, you guys sound defeated lately. Yeah, we were definitely exhausted. Yeah, I don't, yeah, we're definitely not defeated. I don't think. No, we've been through way worse points in time, like in yeah. our like career, whatever you want to call it. Our, yeah, our endeavors. We were like, we truly felt like we were on the cusp of defeat. <laughs> <laughs> like there was like real pragmatic, practical, objective yeah. indicators that, yeah. of like a real defeat is on the horizon. Yeah, right. But we still persisted through that. Right. Yeah. But this is like something else. Yeah. Exhaustion might be the word, right? Yeah. You, you pointed me to uh, an interview between Lex Friedman and Dana White. Yes. Uh, on persistence. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If you haven't noticed why, I'm like, I'm seeking out these like. Oh, I, dude, that's my jam. That's, yeah. that's my entertainment is like, yeah. You know, Hearing, listening to entrepreneurs talk about their journey. Yeah. People who have, who have kind of like dealt with what we've been doing. I mean, we've been doing this for like five, six years now. It's like, fuck, man. Yeah. You, you, eventually you're going to hit these walls. Yeah. Where it's like shit, man. You, like everything within you is telling you to do just to stop. It's so much easier just to quit. <laughs> just you know, there's a beach over there, right? You yeah. Know, like somewhere, a couple hours away, you could be like just chilling out there. Yeah. Kick your feet up in the sand and like you know get a Corona, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> yeah. Maybe a six pack of them. Yeah. You know, and you're just chilling. You could do that. Yeah, right? you they'll, could. They'll stop. I know, but it's, it's, yeah, that's my point. But it's like no, right? So yeah. It's part of the process, and yeah, we're not successful entrepreneurs in any sense no, at all. Not. not as far as like, but we're, we're definitely on a pursuit. Man, we're definitely trying though. <laughs> right, that's what I'm saying. We're in some kind of pursuit, <clears throat> and then yeah, we 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 spend a lot of time, um, like our personal time, like listening yeah. to these people. Yeah, hundred percent. Who have been through this and like suffered. You know, what's the guy? The Nvidia CEO. Yeah, well, yeah, we keep talking about. It. We don't know his name. He has like such a very specific video, man. I wish I. I mean, maybe we could show it. It's like so good. Oh, Jensen Huang. That's right, Jensen. My fucking dude, Jensen. My God, dude, that reminds me of. I don't know if you ever played uh, Deus Ex. Do, Deus, Deus Ex. Ex? I feel like no. DJ, any any ring ring a bell or anything i i feel like i know the name but i can't put a okay, okay well let me okay let me uh let me show you a picture of that uh if if you know what i'm talking about definitely put a comment down below uh okay now does it ring a bell nothing uh no no <laughs> less <laughs> that that picture right there where he's looking up uh, yeah was elon really was talking about this a while back Okay. So this is a very, very famous game back in the day. It's just an RPG first person shooter. Okay. But uh it was set in like a cyberpunk type of era. Okay. And you had like these like augmentations, like your arm could like lift heavier stuff if you upgraded it. You had like augmentations in your eye, you can kind of zoom in and through what? Like like a just like by a link implant or something like that? No, or? no, it's just in the times, like the technology <laughs> was sufficiently advanced where you can have like bio implants. Oh. Like, oh, so, okay. it was just like normalized in yeah, this environment. I feel you. Okay, cool. Um, but anyway, his name was Jensen. Yeah, that's that's why I bring it up. Um, so anyway, <laughs> <laughs> cool. Back to reality. 
<laughs> Holy shit, that is not where I thought you were gonna go with that. I thought we were like, I don't know. It's like this is why crypto is gonna destroy the planet. It's like this game predicted it like twenty years ago. Yeah. Something like that. Okay, Jensen. Yeah. Yeah. So I put a link in the crypto spec channel. Maybe this is the clip that I saw. It like kickstarted me on this like this uh personal journey of like trying to find um mentorship, I guess, through people yeah. who've actually been about it and like been through the, the gauntlet of like pain and suffering. Something that the world's never might be it. All right, let's play it. So if you don't know for context, let's, let's pause it. This yeah. is the founder and CEO of NVIDIA. Genius. Yeah, if you know what NVIDIA is, it started off as like a video game chip manufacturer. Yeah, well, just video cards. Video cards for people who wanted to play on PC, you know, Crisis. They, they were the ones like that was the bench, benchmark back in the day. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, crypto happened. Before you yeah. know it, like every miner needed these things. And That's like, right. so the like, chip technology had to improve. And then it's like, oh, guess what? AI is happening. Yeah. Now, like stock price was only <laughs> going up for the last 25 years. Yeah. It's actually outperforming Bitcoin. Like, yeah. Nvidia stock, like, it's the stocks don't typically like, they don't shine do this, 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 with this much magnitude, right? It's fucking insane. Yeah. But this one makes sense because, you know, this technology oh, yeah. pillar is essential to basically everything in the future. Yeah, and the, the important thing here is that he was listening to like what people were 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 needing like in different industries. Yeah. And he pivoted every single time. Right, exactly. Yeah. So this is a man, like a twenty years story, right? It's, you see him all of a sudden, he's a one of the richer men on earth now. It's mm -hmm. like oh, you know, but there's a twenty year backstory to this. So this clip stood out as far as like what it takes. Hope that's insanely hard to do. Um, the reason why you choose something insanely hard to do, by the way, so that you have lots of time to go learn it. If something is insanely easy to do, like tic-tac-toe, I wouldn't, you know, fuss over it. And the reason for that, obviously, is highly competitive. And so you got to choose something that's incredibly hard to do. And that, that thing that's hard to do discourages a whole bunch of other, all by itself, because the person who's willing to, to, to suffer the longest mm. wins. And so we choose yeah. things that are incredibly hard to do. And you've heard me say pain and suffering a lot. And, there, and it's actually a positive attribute. People who can suffer are the, ultimately the ones that are the most successful. Number one. Number two, you should choose something that somehow you're destined to do. Either a set of qualities about your personality or your expertise or the people you're surrounded by, your scale, your, whatever your perspective, whatever you're somehow destined to do. And then number three, you better, you better love working on that thing so much because unless so, the pain and suffering is too great. Mm. Dude, well said, man. The, yeah, that, that last part Dude, is the real kicker. The Cause, timing. Because, yeah, yeah those, those internal voices. Dude, and Try not to blow a gasket on this one. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it, Your Neil. Your playlist came Brandon up, Neil. dude. <laughs> That's Will's game. Damn it, Neil. That's Will's, like, bedtime playlist activating, dude. Oh, yeah, I listen to Star Talk <laughs> all the time, dude. I bet, dude. I bet you do. <laughs> Where is this? He have, like, a thermodynamics episode? Oh, yeah, he, he, there's an entropy episode. Act, oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would like to watch those, actually. <laughs> it's good. Guy. It's great. I'm sure it is. Yeah. Uh, but anyways. <laughs> yeah, back to Jensen here. Yeah, like those internal voices and like this, this, this feeling of like, yeah, it's just pain and suffering, and like the easy solution is to just give up, right? There's an easy solution to this. Like you just you get stop the pain and suffering yeah. right now, just yeah, by 100%, giving up. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. I feel like yeah, stopping the pain. I, I just I don't know what it is. I'd rather suffer. <laughs> Well, thank God. I'm glad you said that, dude. You might have one of those characteristics that he's Maybe describing. So. It's like you're you willing to suffer. For, you, it, and for people who don't know, you've you've been on this path oh, longer yeah. than I have. Yeah, and, and it's typically, been like 15 years or something like that. Yeah, typically, uh, being an entrepreneur, there's a lot of failures. Yeah, you spend a lot of time, and it feels like it's a waste of time when when you end up failing. Mm -hmm. But it's when you look back at it, you always think, "Cause like, I would have made the same." choices i would have done the exact same thing mm -hmm. because you you grow you learn and then for the next project that you you apply everything that you've learned and you do a better job and hopefully yeah. it's a better outcome yeah absolutely and that's how that's how i feel like if you're not doing that what what is it that you're doing i mean there's a lot of options of things to do <laughs> <laughs> you don't have yeah, but to i guess i guess ultimately the question is what is your purpose if your right, purpose right, right, is right. just to like exist just to breathe 
and yeah. that's it. Like, I, I, it's just not inspiring. And yeah, well, yeah, you don't know. I, it's I not agree. my people, you know. That's not you. You're just not built that way. Well, it's it's not even just not being built that way. It's like who who the people who I choose to like hang around with. Mm-hmm. Like that has like a, a major impact on the quality of life. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. So we're here, like, I guess, like hitting one of those. Um, pain and suffering points at least i am right yeah. and there's a lot of contributing factors to it but yeah i i know we've been through this many too many many times and uh yeah just like not sending the alarm bells a lot of you guys yeah really like um are looking forward to us continuing like <laughs> <laughs> we're not like this isn't like a throwing the towel like yeah. you know, fucking episode <laughs> that should be the thumbnail yeah, we're gonna do that. It's like we're yeah, throwing it's, in the towel. Dude. That's the name of the episode. It's fucking done, dude. We're done. We're tapping out. Yeah, yeah. We're not doing that. We're just simply. That's the point of having a platform like this. Like we could just be open and authentic with what it is we're experiencing, right? Yeah. Across the board. Yeah. Because yeah, of course, like all these things we learn, ordinals, fucking bitmap, anything metaverse, DMT, all these interesting things. Like underneath it all is like we're. You know, we're just a couple of guys. <laughs> I think yeah. it's also important to note that you guys are not full-time YouTubers. Like, you guys are actually building yeah. something. So when you're talking about this, it's the not suffering. YouTube. That's true. Thank you. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a good point. That's, that's something else. A lot of people actually don't know that, right? Yeah. A lot of people are like, oh, you guys built Mscribe? We didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we're talking about, like, people who want to work with us and... um you know, it's like, yeah, you know, you should probably use the platform we built. It's like, yeah. what do you mean? I thought you guys just made podcasts. It's yeah. like, no, dude. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like that. But, but you know what? YouTube takes a lot of time too. Like it has yeah. like, you need to put effort into this. Mm-hmm. It's not like just a couple of guys just sitting here, just like blabbing away. <laughs> At least that's not what we want to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. We want to provide actual value and <sighs> yeah. I mean, we definitely blab. This is definitely a blab. This this is a blab, but, but <laughs> I feel like blab. it's a... It's cheaper than therapy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's right, dude. Uh, but you're right. Yeah, of course. And I think that's why we've, we've I pushed, feel like, pushed a button. We crossed the 20K mark. I feel like this is a profound blab, uh, no, though. No button. <laughs> <laughs> you're the only one celebrating, dude. <laughs> what do you mean? I feel like a, you know, we crossed 20K for a reason, right? Because I think that's... 20,000 people out there are telling us it's like, yeah. you guys have added some kind of value to my existence. Thank you. Right? That's what a subscription means. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like we tie like a fucking giveaway to that button. We probably true. should. Yeah. <laughs> no, we we think, grow faster, but then yeah, be super less lame. traction. Yeah. Yeah. Super lame and non-authentic, which is, you know, I guess our angle here. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, this was a good share though. <laughs> like it, it, it was like very well... Which, which like one? the timing okay. the world's never like, oh yeah do the hard work <laughs> you know what else we should bring up speaking of people we like um we like const a lot i don't know if you're watching this oh const. yeah uh um, the founder of a tensor he's been on our channel like a maybe a year or so ago yeah he basically tweeted at us <laughs> without <laughs> actually tweeting at us yeah correct there and that's not it yeah here it is that's it all right yeah we're, we're on the lines of like just Really trying to like recenter our uh, our bearings here, but yeah, Const. If you don't know, he's the founder of Potenter, fucking Tau, absolutely ripping the crypto market, four billion or so market cap, yeah. AI token, one of the more genius like protocol designs that we've ever come across, and it's something we actually want to really sink our teeth into. Yeah, um, but of course we're <laughs> very limited on bandwidth because of everything we're doing and you know uh, the focus of like seeing bitcoin expand and evolve as an ecosystem that that takes a lot of our focus right but yeah as we already know there's interesting ha- things happening outside of that and this is one of them right so i yeah. put out a tweet that resonated pretty hard yeah so he comes in and he says do not succumb to the masses ideas over ridicule and judgment for those who follow the ideas of the weak will perish in a dim fog of enlightenment jeez Become the, become the vision of the mind's eye and carry a flame to the fire. Do not wait for the fire to carry the flame to you. Build, work, build, work, build, work. That's, that's us, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Fall down, fail, learn, learn, earn, earn, and conquer. Nice. Money is a tool for the creation of a creative space. Do not squander the value of a gift from a friend, family, strangers, enemies, atheists, partisans, 
Peddlers, people, people in the ocean of hungry minds, feed, do not starve, start now, wake up now. A trillion more lives will, will live happy before one of those trillion care or not about your happiness. Love yourself and hate only you if you don't. Wow. So there's a lot of... It's quite profound. Yeah. I was like, I, I, I man sent it to me. I was like, man, he's like speaking to us or... He used like Tao GPT to like come <laughs> up with this. <laughs> it's one That's or the right. other. Yeah, he's just like a humble flexing here. He's like, dude, oh, this this poetic. Yeah, this, yeah, yeah. This wasn't even my conjuring, dude. Yeah. This is a result of uh, of an open large language model yeah. uh, ecosystem supported <laughs> by uh, the Tao token itself and like multiple subnets and all this shit. Yeah, right? yeah. It's like, get fucked. Yeah. Uh, it could be that. It could be. <laughs> Actually, absolutely. After Quite we, the flex. After we just listen to a couple of uh, AI songs that are yeah pretty high quality. Yeah. It could literally be just that. But uh, nonetheless, we're going to imagine. Yeah. Oh, look, he, he put yellow. Maybe this is like not even his words. Maybe yellow wolf. What is that? It's a rapper, dude. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> I mean, who is that? <laughs> He's a rapper, dude. It turned down Google Brain after listening to the song "Best Choice of My Life." All right, well, don't follow the ideas, Louis. Okay, whatever. I got. Well, let's just that. ignore that. Scroll back up. This is Const talking to us, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> telepathically through Twitter, through the platform that's like destroying everything. <laughs> so it's got its good and bad moments, right? Yeah, it's that's like, right. That's right. It's gonna bring us down, like. Energy wise, but it's also going to lift us right back up. So we That's really right. appreciate that constant, like putting out that because. Yeah. Thank you for the tweet. <laughs> yeah. We need that because yeah, there's, there's tons of ridicule and judgment. Definitely. Yeah. These days and um, ideas of the masses. We're <laughs> confronted with that constantly. Yeah. yeah. It's called the squiggly lines <laughs> on the <laughs> charts. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. So, I mean, yeah. It's, yeah. Oh man. That's all there is to really say about that. You know, yeah. But tensor. Fuck, man. I really want to get in there. You guys, okay. For you guys watching this. Yeah, if anyone <laughs> watching this still like into like the BitTensor and... Um, you might not even know what the hell we're talking about. Most yeah. of you probably don't. Because we kind of like really sunk our teeth into that pre-ordinals. Yeah. And like <coughs> like we said, like we, we our subscriber base doubled Since essentially it. then. Yeah. So most of you guys probably only know as far as, far as like us... Based on like our ordinal ordinals, yeah, participation, right? But so yeah, are you guys curious at all about like? <laughs> yeah, what is BitTensor? What is Tau? What is subnets? Yeah, is AI interesting? Why, like, why is why is a decentralized AI matter? Right, and, and if, if if you had seen Silicon Valley, you'd know why it matters. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I still haven't gotten to that part yet. No, but, you haven't. <laughs> but yeah, but we know we're we're well aware. Most people are typically concerned with like the the degeneracy uh factor yeah i mean Quotia. i think the wider crypto community has acknowledged that it, it's like there was a tweet out there that said um this meme like mania is an indicator that you guys have run out of ideas in crypto who said that i think you shared it or something oh no i mean i said that no 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 no, <laughs> no there's somebody who said it's like this meme like crazy like mania, yeah. mania that's happening Dude. is an indicator that the crypto bros have run out of ideas. Yeah, that's my interpretation of it. And there's a tweet that I put out a couple of weeks ago. Like when I'm seeing this happen and it devolved to such a level, like uh, we, can't yeah, even, racism. We, we can't even comfor comfortably or show some of it. Mm -hmm. Most of it's coming down on Solana. And now it's like permeating to other chains, mm -hmm. like layer two to Ethereum and such. Yeah, straight up racist uh, idea. Uh, it's ideas. a racist portfolio. <laughs> yeah, literally. Yeah, it's like how racist can you get with like generating a meme, and like that's becoming like uh, the market's main activity of yeah. like this is I, I want to participate in that. I can make money off yeah. of like creating more racist ideas. Dude, it's so easy to like hide behind your PFP on Twitter as an anonymous and like that's true. talk about your racist portfolio. Yeah, like dude, it's so, so, such insane behavior. It is crazy. And yeah, like I, I interpreted all that and it's like, dude, what what happened to the magic, dude, of like Web3 yeah. and crypto? Like when we first came in, there was like the vibrato and like the balls like of all these yeah. like founders. Like, dude, dude we're going to fuck up the banks. Yeah, Watch every us. single ICO project was going yeah. to change the world. <laughs> every single one. Right. Yeah. It's like, dude, you know, fucking. Now it's just like 
stupid memes. Right. Yeah. It's it's quite interesting to have seen it all kind of like devolve to this state. Yeah. And yeah, to me, it's like it just feels like the last breaths like like if you're like submerging underwater like, <laughs> like your your mouth is like the only thing like not submerged it's like that's what it feels like crypto's <laughs> at right now you know like the last gas like yeah like he's like let's just be racist we're about to die anyways yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean yeah that's what it feels like and that is not good dude we're about to enter into like a whole new paradigm for bitcoins like yeah, that's true. Trajectory and like this is the thing. Like the, people, people are coming back to crypto, <laughs> and all I see is racism, like mass racism yeah. across all chains. Like what the fuck happened, dude? Yeah, it's funny. Like Bitcoin has like its new resurgence. Like yeah. now the wider like public accept a Bitcoin, mm -hmm. and then you go into it, it's just racism. Yeah, it's or just just stupid memes. Period. Yeah, like, it's just good lord. And like you know, what, we're, this was supposed to be a runes conversation, but I think we're pretty much out of time. <laughs> we didn't talk about runes hardly at all. But Casey Rodimer did put out the uh, the Git book, right? Yeah. Or like the extension to the uh, yeah. I was about to say the DMT framework, but the Ordinals framework. Yeah, runes, rune stones, etching, and yeah. So go take a look at that. Yeah, <laughs> but it's basically now it's 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 well understood <laughs> what runes are going to do and introduce and. You know, his motivations have been pretty clear from the beginning. You know, he's like, you guys like yeah. shitcoin casinos? So like, here's my... Here's another one. Yeah, here's my contribution to the shitcoin casino space. And then <clears throat> we already have people lined up and ready to, like, utilize this. And, like, their main mission statement to the world is, like, we're going to make the best meme ever meme. Yeah, we're going to make gonna, this number go up hard. Yeah, we're going to meme the fuck out of you, dude. Yeah. You, like, you've never been memed before. Yeah. You know? And that, it's, that's it. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much it. Right. It's like that's the extent of like where we've kind of progressed and evolved as a as a technology sector. Yeah. And yeah, that, that again, that contributes to, to the fucking like the whole sentiment is like, like uh, uh, I'm just slowly like deflating here. Dude. Yeah. It's crazy. So, yeah, I mean, but we, we see that we we're observers of it, but we know underneath all this. Ri it's just a big old hot potato game. Yeah. There's, there's that's those, what's being propagated, really. But those fundamental values and you they're know, still there. They're still there. They're yeah. still within reach. And that's what, what interests us. That's what keeps us around is that fundamental stuff. Yeah. Like, can we actually do it? Yeah. Can, right? Yeah. Can we actually take down the banks? Take down the banks or like just liberate humanity in, in as many facets as possible through through the utilization of yeah. this new this new paradigm that we've introduced, right? Like, uh, yeah. imagine, it's, it's very complicated. But. Imagine fiat currency all of a sudden has to <laughs> adopt crypto. Like, it has to. Yeah. Like that that would be the day. I totally agree. A, a significantly bigger day than ETFs. Mm. Significant. Like 100x bigger. Yeah. At least. Yeah, maybe okay, so Yeah, what we're seeing now, so this yeah, again, we're not again, the white towel white towel theme is very good for this. That, that was a meme, by the way. The white towel meme. What do you mean? It was like we were throwing in the towel, but oh. not really. Well, yeah, first it's like us personally, we're not throwing in the towels. But this isn't us saying like crypto's dead either. <laughs> it's like here's another <laughs> towel. We're just throwing them all out at you at once. Yeah, that's not at all what's being said. Like this is just this happens. Like typically, like at the beginning of every bull cycle, it used to be just Doge by itself would be like the thing that pumps, just to kind of like yeah, the signal. The signal. It's like yeah. dude, bull market starting. The bat signal is like <laughs> in the sky. Yeah, that's the signal to assemble all the fucking degens of on the planet. It's like crypto's back, baby. Yeah, and. <laughs> <laughs> this meme coin mania season or whatever the fuck is probably just like an extended version of that. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm hoping. Yeah, maybe so. I think that is that is the signal. Yeah, this is the new the new version because yeah, me memery yeah. has expanded beyond Doge right now. It's quite the uh, yeah. it's quite the proliferation. But yeah, this is definitely gonna like just it's gonna do its thing and it's gonna die out very quickly. I think and runes will I think showcase that. Yeah, and then after that, I think the real people who are actually trying to like create real change and real impact, they're going to like steal the show. Hopefully. And I'm really hoping for that. Yeah. I and, think ultimately yeah. that's has to happen because fundamental value is, is always King. Is, yeah. It's always there. Yeah. Yeah. But Tenter's a good example of that. That's right. These guys have been like head down grinding at like something fundamentally valuable that can actually change humanity. And it was faded hard for a long time. I know. Hard. I know. It's still faded. It's still, yeah. I still see these, like, notable influencers with, like, six-figure yeah. follower accounts being like, 
This is a fucking, <clears throat> it's bullshit. It's yeah. like a hype cycle. It's not going to do anything. Yeah, that's now, crazy. Now back to, you know, Wiggly Coin. Yeah. Or whatever the <laughs> fuck. <laughs> like, that's what you guys motherfuckers need to be, like, paying attention to. Yeah. Like, that's going to change all of culture and humanity. Yeah. It's, dude. It's, it's mind-boggling. It's wild. It is. All right. All right. <laughs> Rant complete, dude. <laughs> this is therapy, TJ. You're right. Thank you. Yeah. You need to get that out. All right, guys, that's it for us. If um, I mean, we talked about a lot. If we miss anything big, definitely let us know. Yeah. Yeah, in the comment section I below. Mean, yeah, we know real-world assets are taking off now because of Larry Fink. That's yeah, right, yeah. He, aren't they, like, they're forming their own shit coin or something now or something? Yeah. Like <laughs> <laughs> fucking BlackRock. All, all those stocks are going to be shit coins. Oh, fucking insane. It's, yeah. it's definitely turning mad, for sure. Yeah. All right, guys, appreciate it. And uh, that's been the podcast. Appreciate you, and we will catch you in the next video. Peace.